Hi, I'm Alex and welcome to Super Make Something. Today, we're making an edgelit LED sign with help from the eCup Maker Toy DIY 4-in-1. Let's get started. Let's be honest. Between one-seventh of the world being literally engulfed in flames, an impending global economic collapse, and an out-of-control viral pandemic, 2020 has been a bit of a dumpster fire. To commemorate this event before the next global catastrophe potentially wipes out all of the human race, I wanted to make an edgelit LED sign that, while not solving any of the ongoing crises, at least makes us feel a little bit better about our current situation by giving it a cute face and some blinking lights. The edgelit sign is made out of the following components. One Arduino Pro Micro, one USB cable, four M3 screws, 10 addressable RGB LEDs and associated wiring, one 3D printed base composed of three separate components, and two acrylic plates respectively engraved with an adorable dumpster and a corresponding fire spewing out of its top. To help with this project, eCup Maker graciously sent me their Toy DIY 4-in-1, a hybrid single and dual extrusion FDM 3D printer, CNC machine, and laser engraver. Squeezing all of these capabilities into a package that costs less than $600 is likely a bit of a challenge, yet the Toy DIY 4-in-1 still has several premium features not found on dedicated machines that cost roughly the same price. Most notable among these features are the inclusion of a set of swappable tool heads when using the machine for 3D printing, CNCing, or laser engraving, linear rails instead of V-slot wheels on the machine's X, Y, and Z axes, a removable magnetic build plate when using the unit for 3D printing, a wasteboard surface with a clamping system when using the unit for CNC engraving, an integrated overhead light, an optical limit switch system on the machine's X and Y axes, and a proprietary Z limit switch, which also enables the machine to perform auto bed leveling. The machine came essentially assembled and only required me to place the magnetic build plate on the build platform, insert the 3D printing tool head onto the XY carriage, insert the two filament guide tubes into the print head, and plug in a ribbon cable. I next turned the machine on to load the filament, at which point I noticed that there was no menu option to jog the extruder, meaning that I needed to manually push the filament against the print nozzle after loading it into the machine. While this is usually how I load filament into Bowden extruder printers anyway, a jog option would have been nice, because this would allow a user to manually purge the nozzle after swapping filament. Speaking of purging filament, the Toy DIY 4-in-1 has a ramp with a set of rubber wipers that allows extruded material to be rubbed off of the print head while simultaneously cleaning the nozzle. This feature is interesting because it allows the machine to print in multiple materials with a single nozzle without needing to waste space on the build plate for a prime tower during color transitions. This is a welcome feature, as the Toy DIY 4-in-1's build area is smaller than those found on many dedicated entry-level FDM printers, and this therefore saves a bit of space and allows for the creation of larger models. However, no spare rubber wipers were included with the machine, which could hurt its overall longevity, and this feature can also make a bit of a mess on a tabletop that then needs to be cleaned up after completing a print job. With the machine set up, it was time to begin the design portion of the build. For this, I first opened up Sketchbook Pro for iPad, a free, Apple Pencil compatible sketching app from Autodesk. Here, I used the perspective tool to sketch out a tiny dumpster with a cute face, as well as flames and a ground plane. Because I wanted the flames to retain their hand-drawn appearance, I next used the marker tool with the auto smoothing level set to maximum to trace over this part of the sketch, after which I exported both the original sketch and the flames as separate files and transferred them to my computer. Once there, I opened the sketch up in Inkscape, a free vector graphics program available online. Here, I imported the sketch and then traced over the dumpster's lines using the path tool. I then imported the flames I had drawn previously, positioned them behind the dumpster, added some text, and finally resized the canvas to match the size of some acrylic stock that I had previously measured with calipers. Finally, I exported the images of the dumpster and flames as separate files, after which the graphical design portion of this project was done. I next opened up Fusion 360, a free, computer-aided design software package also made by Autodesk. Here, I modeled a three-piece base that would house the project's USB cord, Arduino microcontroller, LEDs, and acrylic sheets, and also included features for four M3 screws which would hold everything together. The operating concept behind the sign is that the LEDs shine into the bottom of each acrylic plate and light up areas that are carved into the acrylic, making it seem like the graphic is a hologram that is floating in midair. 
The principle that makes certain areas of the sign light up is light refraction. Internally, the acrylic is completely smooth, meaning that light is able to pass through it freely and come out the other side. The engraving process essentially roughs up portions of the acrylic surface, causing light to be scattered in these areas as they are traveling through the plate, and causing these portions to look like they are lighting up because of the resulting light diffusion. After I was satisfied with the design, I exported each of the bodies as separate STL files, after which it was time to start 3D printing. Ecub Maker provides its own slicing software, called Ecubware, with the Toy DIY 4-in-1 machine. Here, I loaded each model, sliced it using the program's default printing profile for PLA, and then saved the G-code to an SD card. Since this software is a Cura derivative, there isn't much to say about preparing and slicing models, with the exception that knowing which extruder you should select during slicing is a bit confusing, because they are named 1 and 2, instead of something more intuitive like left and right. Therefore, be sure to write down which of the machine's Bowden tubes contains which filament when preparing models for printing. After slicing, I finally transferred the SD card to the printer, and used its menu to start the print. During the unit's auto-home process to zero out the machine, I was greeted with a stuttering noise as the toy DIY tried to home its Y-axis. This indicated that the stepper motor was driving the build plate into a mechanical limit on the machine's frame, because the end stop was not working correctly. To investigate, I stopped the print and removed the plastic cover on the machine's Y-axis stepper motor. Here, I noted that the issue was not related to a loose connection or miswiring at the factory, because the stepper motor and limit switch shared the same ribbon cable. Instead, the issue resulted from the Y-axis limit switch PCB being mounted too low, which caused the nub that triggers the optical end stop to instead ram into the limit switch circuit board. The cause of this was a missing washer that should have been placed on the standoff beneath the PCB. Because I did not have another washer handy, I moved the top washer on the end stop PCB to the circuit board's bottom side, after which the machine homed and started printing without issue. I did email Ecub Maker to let them know about this issue, and they said that this will be addressed in future units by adding an additional washer underneath the limit switch PCBs. Overall, I was very impressed with the quality of the prints. To ensure bed adhesion, all models are printed on a raft by default. Both the raft and support were easily removed from the print, and the overall surface finish of the parts were very smooth. Removing prints from the print bed was also incredibly easy, because of the flexible magnetic build plate included with the machine. The dimensional accuracy of the parts was also spot on, matching exactly what I had modeled in CAD, which would be important in the next steps, because both the LEDs and acrylic plates needed to slot into their modeled recesses exactly. By the way, I noticed that over 97% of people watching my videos are not subscribed to my channel. If you enjoy projects like this and are learning something new, please consider subscribing and giving the video a thumbs up. With the 3D printing complete, I next tackled the electronics portion of the build. The LED sign is powered by 10 addressable RGB LEDs and also contains an Arduino Pro Micro with associated wiring to connect everything together. Because I wanted the dumpster and fire to light up in different colors, I first soldered up two separate LED strands composed of five LEDs each as shown on screen. After this, I inserted each LED into its corresponding recess in the 3D printed base, and then fed the wire leads at the end of each strand through a slot that I had modeled into the part during the CAD process. I next connected the LED strands to the Arduino as shown. Finally, I inserted a microcontroller and USB cable into the recess in the base, and then clamped everything together by joining the remaining 3D printed pieces using four M3 screws. At this point, it was time to program the Arduino to light up the LEDs. After opening the Arduino IDE, I first headed to Tools, Manage Libraries, and searched for the Adafruit NeoPixel library by typing NeoPixel into the search bar. I then clicked the Install button, which copied all of the software libraries needed to command the colors of the LEDs onto my computer. Next, I opened up the LED sign sketch that I had written previously in order to change the colors of the LEDs. This code first initializes both NeoPixel strands, and then sets the LEDs underneath the acrylic plate with the dumpster to light up in a teal color. I wanted the flame graphic on the sign to transition between various shades of red to make the sign a bit more dynamic, which I accomplished with a method called Fire. This method simply adjusts the LEDs commanded RGB color values for each LED with a for loop during each cycle of the program, and runs continuously while the microcontroller is powered on. To program everything, I simply plugged the other end of the USB cable into my computer and clicked the Upload button, which compiled the program and transferred it to the microcontroller. 
At this point, the LED strands lit up in their corresponding colors, and the electronics portion of this project was complete. Since the USB cord is a bit beefy relative to the rest of the sign, I wanted to make sure that the sign would not accidentally be pulled off of the table when it is plugged in. To do this, I decided to add a bit of cork underneath the sign's base, and figured that this would be a good opportunity to test out the Toy DIY 4-in-1's laser toolhead. I again headed back to Inkscape, and created a small rectangle that matched the dimensions of the base, and inserted the Super Make Something logo and a QR code linking to my YouTube channel within its boundaries. Since the laser is an engraver and not a cutter, it is unfortunately not strong enough to cut through thicker media like cork and wood, however, it is definitely strong enough to personalize items by engraving them, making this machine ideal for crafting applications. I next exported this image from Inkscape, and opened up eCub Maker Laser, a separate piece of custom software provided by eCub Maker, used to generate G-code for laser engraving. The features of the software are quite impressive, and include options for processing grayscale images using various different half-toning methods so that they can be engraved by the laser. After positioning the image on the bed to my liking and double-checking the size of the engraving, I again exported the G-code to the SD card. Installing and calibrating the laser head was very straightforward, and simply required following the instructions on the printer's menu screen to remove the ribbon cable and printer head, swap it out with the laser module, and reboot the machine. Since laser engraving literally burns material, I was a bit concerned with fumes that would be generated during this process, so I moved the Toy DIY 4-in-1 into my garage, where I had plenty of air circulation. Here, I simply followed the instructions on the printer's menu screen to place the material and home the laser, after which I was ready to begin engraving. Laser cutters and engravers can be extremely dangerous, and can cause serious damage to your vision if you're not wearing proper eye protection. Thankfully, eCub Maker includes a pair of laser safety glasses with the machine, which should definitely be worn while operating the laser. The Toy DIY 4-in-1 had absolutely no issues with engraving the material, and I was overall very impressed with the final quality of the image. I next brought the engraved cork back inside, carefully aligned it with the 3D printed base, and used a pencil to mark out where I needed to cut the material with some scissors. I then removed the protective cover from the cork, revealing its adhesive backing, stuck it to the sign's 3D printed base, and then used an X-Acto knife to trace around the base's edge and cut the cork to size. Finally, it was time to engrave the acrylic sheets using the Toy DIY 4-in-1 CNC toolhead. For this, I again followed the on-screen prompts to swap out the laser with the CNC head, and then used an Allen wrench to install the end mill that came with the machine, which is held in place with two set screws. At this point, I also swapped out the magnetic build plate for the included cutting platform, which required me to install four clamps and bolts into pre-threaded holes in the machine's build platform to hold the material in place during the cutting operation. CNC G-code is also generated using eCubWare, so I opened this program back up, and used the open menu to import the dumpster graphic that I had designed previously. I then specified the desired dimensions of the image, selected the CNC option on the right side of the screen, changed the depth of cut to 0.4mm, clicked the slicing button to generate the CNC G-code, and saved it to the SD card. I then repeated this step for the fire graphic. Since CNC machining is a subtractive process, it can also generate a bit of a mess, so I brought the machine back into my garage, and then followed the unit's on-screen prompts to place my material and home the end mill. One thing to note is that the end mill is very thin, so be sure to not level the z-axis too low, as this could cause the machine to cut too much material during its first pass, which could snap the bit. Overall, I was very impressed with the machine's engraving quality. Speed and feed rates seem to be well-tuned for acrylic, though I would also recommend having a can of compressed air handy so that it's possible to clear plastic chips generated during the cutting operation. Since speed and feed rates are very dependent on the material you are cutting, I would have liked to see more cutting options available in the G-Code generation software, which could extend the utility of the machine and allow someone to do things like mill custom PCBs. With the cutting done, the final steps were to head back to my office, insert the engraved acrylic plates into the 3D printed base, and finally plug the USB cable into a power outlet. At this point, the LED sign lit up in a bright teal and red, letting everyone in its vicinity know that 2020 is on track for being a dumpster fire of epic proportions. Considering that everything that was needed to make the sign was done with a single machine, the eCup Maker Toy DIY 4-in-1 is quite impressive. 
The unit is certainly capable of producing beautiful 3D prints, CNC engravings, and laser etchings once set up correctly, and I will most certainly make use of this machine in future projects where I don't want to use my dedicated CNC or laser cutter, or in situations like a Maker Fair where I need a compact, portable 3D printer. A big thank you to eCub Maker for sending the Toy DIY 4-in-1 to me for this video. In case you're interested in picking one up for yourself, links to where this machine can be purchased online can be found in the video description below. If you enjoyed this video and found it useful, please consider giving it a like, sharing it with your friends, and subscribing to my channel. Also, be sure to click the bell icon to be notified when I upload my next video. In case you're interested in supporting the channel in another way, I also recently started a Super Make Something Patreon page, which you can find by following the link in the video description. Well, that's all there is to this episode. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and be sure to wash your hands often. But for now, let's go Super Make Something. Thanks for watching! If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit the like button and share it with your friends. Your support helps me make more episodes. Links to all project files can be found in the video description below. Click the subscribe button on the left to keep up with my latest projects, click the cards on the right to check out more episodes, and connect with me on social media. Thanks again for watching! Now go super make something!